Hello, and welcome back to Concert Critiques in Cars with Emily. So, I am really excited about this show. It was kind of a last minute thing. I wasn't sure if I was going until um, recently. And um, yeah, so there were five bands, so we should jump right in. So the show was um, the Hawthorne Heights 20th anniversary um, for, um, I want to say silence. Album. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there were five bands, so we should probably get in now before we, um, yeah, before I get home because I feel like I might get home before uh, this is over. So anyway, the first band who opened was This Wildlife. Um, loved the whole world. Yeah, sorry, loved the whole word repetition in the verses and the chorus. Um, I really love the instrumentals as well. Um, in the chorus, um, the crowd was encouraged to get their hands up and clap, um, and then a bassist came out, so it was only two people, and they were really impressive because they played a lot of instruments by themselves with only two people. Uh, the, the not, the guy who was not singing, he was on the drums, and he would get off and play, like, this keyboard guitar thing it was crazy um so really give them a lot of credit for kind of having this two-man show with all these instruments some of it was recorded like especially in the first song they had strings i noticed the strings so obviously those were recorded there weren't any strings on the stage but give them a lot of credit um so yeah so um fantastic opener real the opening song really liked it definitely gave the crowd some energy um yeah so really great so then the next song i think is called positivity negative um which i like the name <laughs> if that's really what it's called definitely positivity but i don't know he then just kind of took a pause and then said negative so i'm gonna assume that that's what it was called anyway um full instrumental intro which i really liked faster quicker feel for the verses um he was like so into the song and it made me feel like I just liked it that much more. He was like, man, he is like really digging this and enjoying this. Um, and I really liked the lyrics in the bridge as well. After that, there was a slower, less instrumental heavy start. Um, I liked the part where repetitions in the chorus and the instrumentals in the bridge. Um, and then I really liked the lyrics following the bridge. So then after that, um, he did a cover of Take Me Back Sunday, Cute Without the E, fantastic choice. Um, and then he played it acoustic. So that was really fun and, and again good song had the crowd going crazy so that was awesome um then after that he taught the crowd four words so that they could sing along whenever he lifted his ukulele um so the song had a less instrumental heavy start i liked lyrics in the first verse and um then after that it went into uh country road the west virginia song so um so yeah that was cool and then after that they actually um like played the excerpt of that song while the singer was kind of getting ready for the rest of the set. Um, after that, I talked about working at Guitar Center and that's how they met. Um, and then he wrote the song in the break room and then like five days later he was fired and he got fired from <laughs> Guitar Center twice. <laughs> so it was funny. It was a really like good anecdote. I liked it a lot. I thought that was good. Um, yeah, so then um, I really liked the lyrics in the first verse, and I loved um, the heart is heavy line, uh, and then the line that came right after that, so I really, really liked that. Really liked the lyrics. So after that, the next song was just the guitar to start, um, then the instruments came in. I really liked the lyrics in the verses, especially the second verse. Uh, full drums came in after the bridge. He Okay. So he put the guitar down and then he did like a percussion thing. And so there was like a little percussion stand with a tambourine and something else connected to it. And there was obviously like a mic that picked up the loop thing. So he did like the first part and then it looped and then he did the second part and it looped. So that was really cool. Um, so then after he did that, while the other, um, while the other instruments were going, he did jumping jacks and then he went and did push-ups where he clapped in between each push-up, which is impressive. And then he like jumped on the stage and did a, like a toe touch thing, which was crazy, like could never do that. So that was really impressive and just like a fun little addition to um, the last song. And then after that, he picked up a different guitar and um, yeah, and then the plate. It was like the most epic ending for like an opener. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, great way to end the first set. So then next was Stick to Your Guns. And so, they were hardcore, which is not 
not my preference, but um, yeah, especially coming off of such an amazing opener, um, this wildlife, I really, really enjoyed them. Like literally I was like, wow, this show is like perfect, like a 10 right now. So then, um, you know, to hear this, that wasn't so much right up my alley, I was a little, <sighs> anyway. Um, so the first song had um, an instrumentally heavy intro with like two quick screams in the beginning. Um, and then they had like a moment of lighter um, instrumentals. And they moved around the stage a lot. The singer, they were all around the stage, so that was cool. Um, he told the crowd to bang their heads for the bridge. Um, I actually really like the lyrics and the pacing following the bridge. So I, basically everything after the bridge till just about the end of the song, I really, really liked. Um, after that, they played Weapon. It had um, um, instrumental heavy start and a lighter instrument. Yeah, sorry. Um, and then it got heavy and fast. Um, it was hard to understand the lyrics that were like the screamy, more screamy stuff. Um, and then after that, he said, this is like your first time seeing this, probably your first time seeing us and it's probably gonna be your last. Like we know we're hardcore. Um, so I at least appreciated that he was realistic. And, um, but I also kind of was like fine with them being there despite the emo-ness of the night. I really like enjoyed that Hawthorne Heights like went out of the box and invited a heavier band. Um, so then he they he asked the pit to start a circle pit. Um, I liked the quick short feel of the first part of the song. Uh, really heavy instrumentals throughout. I couldn't tell if they transitioned to a new song until like towards the end. I was like, oh no, that was still the same song. Um, so that was a little bit confusing. But then after that, they played Invisible Rain, and I don't know if it's like rain outside your window rain, like wet drops rain, or like rain like rain of a king or queen. Um, I actually really did like the opening instrumentals and I liked the chorus with the more like singing than the previous songs. So anytime there was like more of a singing portion instead of like a screamy portion, I, I like that. Um, especially in particular in the song. So they talked about how um, this was the f at the first show, so this was their second show on this tour with the bands. Um, someone screamed that hardcore music sucks and like yeah he's like and you know our crowd booed for that and he was like no he's like it's okay I thought it was funny um but again like he's very realistic and I'm sure they're gonna get a lot of that throughout the tour I hope they don't I mean again they were good it's just like I do understand both sides um so anyway then after that they played nothing you can do to me um there was a fast quick feel but um I really like the singing part of the verse and the pre-chorus uh, one of the guitarists also like screamed, which was really impressive. Um, and and I loved the bridge. I think it was the bridge. Um, and then when the chorus was sung, it was my favorite song of the set up to that point, and probably for the rest of the set. <laughs> but I really liked that song. Um, so yeah. So then after that, they played such pain. Um, and they were doing like intentional feedback at the beginning, so that was kind of cool. It was a really heavy song, and he said he goes, "This is going to be a heavy one." So. Um, yeah, he said that at the beginning, and it was. It was just like a heavier song. Couldn't really understand the lyrics. Um, not my favorite, especially after I just heard like a song. I was like, oh, I actually like really like this song. And then to go into such pain was not great for me personally. But um, all right. So then after the next song, I really liked the guitar to start. Um, then the instrumentals. It was just the Sorry, just the guitar. So I really liked that part. And then the instrumentals came in um, uh, throughout. So yeah, so I liked the instrumentals and the instrumentals throughout. Really liked the singing parts, um, especially towards the end. So again, I know I they're a heavier band, but I liked all of the less heavy parts. And then their last song, I really liked the chorus a lot. I want to say maybe like Forever Us was maybe the like title. At least that was in the chorus. Um, I was not a huge fan of the transition back into the heavy parts. Like it just... I don't know. Again, I liked the more sing-songy parts throughout the set, um, and so all the heavier parts. So I was not the huge, the biggest fan of the hugest, the biggest, the biggest fan of. So then after that, it was the band that I pretty much went to the show for, um, Armor for Sleep. But I was so excited to see 
see them again. I love them so much. And um, again, I would have loved them to headline or have gone second to last. But hey, I was happy with them just going on and off. Um, <laughs> so the recording started playing about time travel. And then they came out and played Remember to Feel Real. Um, which, again, is just so amazing. I love seeing all of their songs. So I'm not going to be the most non-biased about this. Anyway, great first song, really loved it. Subtle changes in the chorus with the pacing of words, fantastic. After that, they played Dream to Make Believe. Um, he jumped around whenever he was not singing, like all over the stage, it was awesome. Um, more subtle changes, so glad. Like just, it was so good. Um, and then in the second verse, especially with the subtle changes, just fantastic. After that, he said, uh, he said, he played Smile for Camera, Smile for the Camera. Um, it's not my favorite recorded song, so I probably would have picked another song just because there are other songs there's I like more. But seeing it live, um, it was really cool. I liked the instrumentals in the chorus. Um, it's definitely like a good crowd amber upper live. Again, I don't know why the recording version is not, doesn't do it for me, but um, seeing it live was really fantastic. Uh, the bridge is really, really good live, so I really enjoyed that. Um, and then uh, he was like jumping really high during the instrumental bridge. It was like really impressive. And yeah. So again, glad they kind of got that one out of the way for me personally, just because it's not my favorite, but it was awesome to see live. Um, so then um, they played Awkward Last Words and there were definitely pacing changes in the first four lines. Uh, loved it. And then there were pacing changes in the second verse. Um, and then at the beginning of the bridge. Okay. So the lyrics are like alive, but I swear he was saying revolution. And now I can't remember what the lyric is that I thought it was. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that was um, something that if that, I, I don't think the word revolution is in that song at all, but I swear I heard him say it instead of like, he was clearly replacing the lyric and it worked. Um, so yeah, if you heard that, if you know that that is actually what he's been doing during this show, like, or this tour, please let me know. Um, very interesting. I swear I heard the word revolution. I was like, I don't think the word revolution is in this song. Um, so yeah, really liked it though. Okay, great song. <laughs> um, so then he told a story about um, the end of the world and then they played um, In This Nightmare Together, which had a faster quick start. I didn't recognize the song. Um, I really liked the shift from the chorus to the verse, and then like there was a build up back up to the chorus, so I really liked that part of the song as well. And then I really liked the lyrics of the chorus as well. Um, so then after that, they played The More You Talk, The Less I Hear. And I love when they play that song because I love that song so much. And again, I don't know if that is like a super popular song of theirs, but I literally love it so much. The lyrics about the stars on the road is just like, so hearing it live, like pretty much almost every time I've seen them is just, just amazing. I, I love it so much. I love it so much. I love it so much. And so I just, it was great. It was just great. They changed, he changed the end of the first chorus a lot. So I really love that. Just fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So then after that, um, they played The Truth About Heaven, which was a really good follow-up. Um, and he encouraged us to sing louder. He let the crowd sing parts of the chorus. Uh, so they dropped the instrumental so that we could sing, um, and then they let the crowd sing the last, the last lyrics of the song. Personally, I would have liked Stay on the Ground. I think this might be the first time I saw Armor for Sleep and they didn't play Stay on the Ground, um, but obviously they were going to play Truth About Heaven because that was one of their bigger songs. I get it. Also, well played, second to last, because obviously they finished with Car Underwater. Oh my gosh, I just love this song so much. So fun to see live. Um, he let us sing like three times throughout the song. It was so fantastic. I'm pretty sure I hurt my leg because I was jumping so hard and I was in flip-flops and I don't even care. It was so fantastic. Oh, I love them so much. I love seeing them. I just, I'm so happy that they're back. I just love them. Okay, so then after that, it was Amberlynn. Um, they started with a, a song that had really good instrumentals, an instrumental intro, and um, the singer came out on stage and started singing um, after like, so the whole band was out on stage except for the singer, and then the singer came out and started singing. Um, I really liked the instrumentals and the lyrics in the chorus, a uh, really good opener, and I really loved the lyrics in the second verse, which by the way is going to be the theme of Amberlynn. I feel like their second 
second verses, man. I don't know if it was just like I started paying attention more or if it's just that much better than the first verse, but tended to really like the second verses. Um, and then at the end, he held a note with like that screamo thing going on, so that was really impressive. After that, they played a song. I really liked the instrumental intro. Um, I liked the lyrics and the chorus. Then I want to say he said it was two Braves. I don't know. I don't know the song. I don't know. It doesn't make sense, but maybe it does. Um, anyway, I really did like the dual singers for the verse, like especially the first one. It was really very like, prominent, and I really liked that. Um, and then I liked the lyrics. Guess when, guys? Second verse. Um, so then after that, the guitarist uh, got up on the ledge and got the crowd clapping. I really loved the beginning of this song. It was less instrumentally heavy, but still like full. It still sounded full. Um, and I love that. Okay, so like they had these like little like step stooly thing, step stool, step up bar things that they could stand on um, in the front of the stage. And so the band members just kind of like use them interchangeably. They would go in the front, they would kind of move backwards. So I really liked that it was just like a very communal feel to the stage. It didn't feel like the singer was being like up fronty and everyone else was kind of behind. I, I really liked that. And actually it kind of makes sense later on once I realized what was going on. So I'm, I'm glad that 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 was the feel from the beginning without having the knowledge that I will impart on you in a moment. Um, so then the song after that was a really great um, follow up. It had a similar feel. I liked the lyrics in the first verse. Surprise, not, I mean, the second one was good too, but the first verse particularly. Um, he kneeled in front of the stage for the bridge. Um, and then it was a less instrumentally heavy, really liked the bridge. So then after that, the next song started with a less instrumentally heavy start. Um, I liked the sudden um, shift to like a full instrument for the chorus. And then there was like a quicker, shorter feel. So I really liked that as well um, in that song. Um, okay, so then I couldn't tell if it was the third verse or the bridge. So I really liked that shorter, quicker feel in what I'm gonna say is the third verse because I don't know if it was the bridge. Um, Cause then I really liked the change in the chorus towards the end. So he like made a change to the chorus and it was really good. So I really liked that song. That song was a good one. Um, then after that, he explained, and now all of a sudden everything's making sense, that he's not the actual singer. And it's funny because I was like, man, Amberlynn singer has a really distinct voice. And when he was singing, I was like, I don't think that this is his voice. Um, and he's a singer actually from another band. And um, so their other lead singer, couldn't dedicate the time um so they asked him to do it and he was like I've been a fan all my life and so it was just like a really like genuine moment and it's interesting because their banner behind the um stage said Amberlynn question mark <laughs> so I really like that I thought that was a good way to like represent that it wasn't Amberlynn like people might be used to hearing um and again like he just seems so genuinely excited to be playing with the band members and you know he said like because you guys are okay with me singing, you know, these band members like have a chance to do what they love doing. So it was great. I really liked that, um, really genuine. And I'm glad that they addressed it instead of not addressing it. And again, the banner is like a funny and very like good way to kind of represent what was going on. Um, so anyway, after that they played Walk Alone. Um, I really loved the quick short feel and um, the instrumentals. And I actually really liked the chorus. Um, yeah, I like that song. It was a good follow-up. Um, so then, after that, sorry guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so then after that, they played Paper Thin. It was a good follow-up. Really loved the singing in the second verse because for some reason it just like really caught my attention. Um, like really caught my attention. And again, it took me way too long to realize that I recognize the song. Um, but it was fun to see live and like once I realized I was like, oh yeah, I totally know this song. Um, but yeah, so that was great. And then after that, the singer left and the guitarist talked about um, how like in the history of the band, they had broken up, got back together. Um, he talked about like how backstage they were talking about, is it Silver Springs versus Silver Spring? <laughs> so I appreciate that they like worked to get that right. Um, 
again, because I understand you're in a new city every night and you will probably forget this information tomorrow, but the fact that you tried tonight is awesome. Um, so after that, they played Godspeed, which was really good to see live, uh, great energy. Uh, the bassist was kneeling like in front of the drums and the lead singer gave him a hug during the bridge, which the instrumental bridge, so that was cute. Um, and then after that, they played their biggest hit. Um, glad they ended on that. So great to see live. Love the second verse in particular. Um, the bridge was really cool to see live. They definitely kind of extended the guitar instrumentals. Um, and then he let the crowd sing part of the chorus. And um, yeah, so then I uh, had the crowd jump for the instrumentals at the end. So that was cool. I really liked that. So glad they saved at the end, although I kind of anticipated that they would since that really is like their biggest hit. Um, and they kind of didn't have like a much bigger one that could have been replaced with it. Anyway. Now we get to Hawthorne Heights. So um, they had like the house that's on the cover of the album or in the in the album or on the cover of, I don't know, in the Ohio is for Lovers video. I'm not really sure, but the house is like recognizable if you have listened to Hawthorne Heights before. Um, so they put the sheet in front um, and then lights kind of like appeared behind it and then they like disappeared again and then they appeared and then they disappeared. So they got brighter each time. Um, and then the sheet fell and they were all there on the stage. Um, the first song, okay, so they went in order and I didn't realize this until the third song because I was kind of waiting to see if they were going to play the third song later in the set. Um, so I don't have the first two names, the first song, sorry guys. But after that I have all the names except for one. Um, so the first one song had um, instrumentals, um, I like a heavy instrumental intro. Um, they had the crowd clap for the instrumental transition to the first verse. I really liked the chorus, especially with like the scream me part. Um, okay, but then it was really confusing because it seemed like they kind of stopped songs and then they played this like really short song, but I can't honestly tell you if it was the end of the first song or the beginning of the second song, or if it was a whole different song. Um, and on the album, it definitely isn't there, so I don't know. I'm not sure. If you know, let me know, please, please. Um, after that, obviously, they, it was a great follow-up. That was the note I wrote before I realized they were going in order, <laughs> which is good, because that means they made a really good album and they picked a good song to follow up. Um, I really liked the lyrics at the end. It was hard to tell, again, about the end, um, but like the bridge was not the end of the song. I thought they went into the right song, but it wasn't the next song. It was actually just the end of the first song. So I don't know why the first two songs were so hard for me to tell whether it was the end or not. But um, but yeah, so it was great. So I really liked that um, everyone on stage sang during that part. So I liked that and it was like a good build up into that. So I liked that. Um, then he addressed what to call us. He's like, we've called you DC, Maryland, Silver Spring. So again, love that they actually took the time to like consider that this is a unique area, uh, at least a little bit. Um, I guess DMV would probably be the most appropriate, but that's okay. You know what? <laughs> Silver Spring is a good start. Um, so then after that, they played Nikki FM and that's when I realized they were playing it in order. So, um, so yeah, great song way too early for me personally. I you know I like to save the songs that I know for the bitter end. Um, but it was like so fun to see. Loved it. Uh, let the sing, uh, sorry, they let the crowd sing. Um, um, sorry, they let the crowd sing the last few lyrics. Again, the bridge to that song is amazing. So, um, so yeah, it was like fantastic to see. Again, way, 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 way too early for me. Um, but, couldn't really complain. It was really good. Um, so then after that, the next song in order was the transition. Um, I really liked the instrumentals. They had a short, quick feel to them uh, during the chorus, I'm guessing. And then the second verse I really liked as well. Um, so then after that, they played Blue um, Burns Orange. Uh, I really loved the short, quick feel of the bridge and um, the lyrics too. They were really good. So after that, um, okay, so then he addressed that in the crowd, there was a kid who had a sign who wanted to play the drums for the next song, which is called Silver Bullet. Um, but he talked about how they changed the drums for this, like, like switched the song around or something. And so he changed the drums. And so the kid wouldn't know what the drums were. But 
that he, the kid, could come onto the stage and play around on the drums after the set. Um, so yeah, so um, he talked about how they were about to break up um, because they weren't being successful at the beginning of their career and then how they sent this song in particular to record labels and finally someone was like, wow, you guys are like actually a good band. Um, and so he encouraged the crowd to, you know, shine light on people and, and tell them that, you know, you believe in them and that they're doing a good job. So, um, really like the beginning was really like staccato. So I liked that. Um, loved the lyrics and the quick short feel of the verses and, um, they had dual vocals. Um, like I'm going to call it the pre-bridge cause that's what I think it was. It was a pre-bridge. So I really liked that as well. <laughs> um, okay. So um, then he slowed the song down for the chorus after the bridge. Um, I'm not sure if it's like that in the recording. The music dropped and he had the crowd sing the last few lines, which I'm assuming, uh, wow, assuming definitely doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, so I really liked that. Definitely seemed like there were some changes from the recorded version, so I appreciated that. After that, they played screenwriting and apology. Um, it started with a less um, instrumentally heavy um, I love the transition from the beginning to the first verse-ish. I'm not really sure if it's the first verse or not. Um, then it got more instrumentally heavy from the verse, or for the verse, I mean. So yeah, so that part that I'm talking about was like right before the verse started and then the instruments came in um, for the verse. Really liked the lyrics in the second verse. Um, yeah, I really like that song. I definitely am going to have to listen to the recorded version because I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I've maybe ever heard that song ever. So I really liked it. So then came the moment of truth. What are they going to skip Ohio's for Lovers or were they gonna play it? Because they're playing the album and they played Nikki FM. Um, they skipped it, which was the best decision ever. I was so happy and I obviously knew it was coming at the end at that point. So I was really glad they did that. Like good choices, like really, really good choices. Um, so yeah, so I'm glad they did that. So then that means the next song was Wake Up Call. I really liked the references to breathing in the lyrics. Um, the chorus had a good, quick, short feel, um, and then it was like screamy, so I really liked that. Um, I liked the, lore, the um, lyrics in the chorus, and the breakdown for the bridge was really good too, so I liked that as well. Um, after that, they played Sandpaper and Silk, but before they started playing, he talked about like looking back at themselves and how um, they felt like they were messing up the album, and um, they don't really play this song because a lot of people come up to them and tell them how important it is for them and it's seen people through a lot of rough times. Um, so it had um, an instrumentally heavy, um, just an instrumental intro, um, and then um, kind of dropped for the verse, so I liked that. Um, and then I liked the, um, the instrumentals between the verses and the chorus, like the transition, I, I liked that a lot. I thought that was really good. So after that, they played um, Speeding Up Octaves, which is the last song on the album. Um, they went right into the song. I really liked the lyrics in the chorus and the second verse. Loved the lyrics in the second verse, guys. The second verse, I, I know it's a different band, but holy cow, man. Um, his guitar, okay, so I don't know if the guitar was never plugged in because they had like switched guitars and the guy forgot to plug it in or if it had like popped out, um, but the, the guitar for sure wasn't plugged in. And so he had to get the crew member. He was like, guys, my thing isn't plugged in. So that was pretty crazy. Um, and then after that, they went into another song, um, which obviously I'm assuming was not on this album. It's not on this album, guys. Um, <laughs> Cause they just played the end of it. So instrumentally heavy intro with lyrics. Um, I liked the lyrics in the chorus and the screamy part in the second verse. I really, really liked the bridge of this song great follow-up I thought to end the you know to be past the album um so then after that he sat on the edge of the stage while the guitar was kind of playing in the background and telling us how he wanted to talk about the last 20 years and how like it's hard to deal with loss on a road because like just because something bad happens at home and you're not there for it like you have to go on the next day or that that night um because you can't just like cancel show because you're sad so that was pretty impactful um he said this was a new song um and so it was about the for them it was about the balance between the beauty and the heartbreak of being on tour um it was just guitars um to start an instrumental then the drums came in with the lyrics uh the lyrics were really very clearly geared towards like being on tour as a band 
Um, and then they listed the names of two people that they lost. So again, just like, oh, and he had people hold their phones up for the flashlight. So that was a good song well placed I guess because where else are you going to put it if you're doing the whole album from start to finish minus the most popular songs so so I thought it was was well done and and you know the sitting on the edge of the stage had a very clear break from the previous song um so I thought that was pretty good so then after that he jumped down off the stage and went to the barricade said good night and said um he hopes to see us here as emo grandparents in 20 years um so I thought that was funny and then, of course, he played Ohio's for Lovers. Uh, like, amazing to see live. Really love the pre-chorus and the chorus of that song. Uh, he thanked the bands before the bridge. And then they finished the song, and it was amazing. So good. So good. Okay. Oh my goodness, I don't even know how to score this. This is just insanity. So, opener of this wild life was so, so fantastic. Um, the next band, not my favorite genre, but again, like they did a good job and there were definitely some parts of their set that I enjoyed. Um, you know, anytime they were more singing than not singing, Armor for Sleep, amazing. Honestly, if it was the first band and then Armor for Sleep, this would have been a really high score. Um, Amberlynn was fantastic. Again, I really, really liked that he addressed the singer thing. I thought that was really great. Um, and I thought he did a great job as not the singer, but the singer, um, and they played their last, their biggest hit last. So obviously that is a win for me. And then Hawthorne Heights was really good. Wish they would have saved Nikki FM for a little bit later in the set, but I understand why they didn't because of the um, show <laughs> or the album. Um, oh God, I mean, it was just so good. Seeing that song, those two songs live was so good. Um, oh boy, I am, this is a really rough one for me to judge because there were like such highs and then pretty lows, <laughs> lows. Um, I'm going to go with an 8.3 for this one. Um, yeah, 8.3. I can't believe I'm almost home, guys. This is nuts. Wow, long time. Uh, thanks for sticking with me if you're still here. Uh, so let me know. Did you go to another show on the tour? Uh, did you want to go to a show? Did you go to my show? Um, do, you, do you agree, disagree with my score, 8.3? Um, yeah, so let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.